Hi, this is Justin with Virtual Hammer, and in this video we're going to be going over variables uh, using Diagram. So the concept of variables in scripting, you should, if you understand the concept, that, that's great. If you don't, uh, I'm going to assume you, you know what a variable is at this point. I may have some other more educational videos on going over the overall concept, but this is mostly to show you how to use these things in Diagram itself. Uh, so we're going to go over some of the things we did in the previous video, and we're going to make and use some variables uh, in Diagram. So the first thing we need to do, since I made this fresh again, we're going to need to make another object with a Diagram behavior on it. But instead of just making it from this menu this time, uh, I'm going to make a cube, uh, just make a regular 3D cube that's in the world that doesn't have a Diagram uh, behavior on it. A diagram component on it so there's a cube in the world and it doesn't know about diagram you can see it doesn't have a, a graph associated with it so I'm gonna add one a different way this time I'm gonna go to the, the add components and I'm gonna add a component a diagram behavior component and now this is a cube or any object you wanted I just used a cube with a diagram behavior on it and the start event comes up we'll talk about events a bit more in another video but we want to talk about variables so with variables, you can add variables in Diagram. There's this little inspector panel. Again, we can hide it by clicking that button. Clicking this plus will allow us to create a variable. And I'm going to create a bool here. I'm just going to name it my bool. And if I hit create, you'll see that it pops a variable up that I can make public or private if I click that. And I can assign the value right in here to true or false by clicking that. Uh, there's a little panel right here. I can rename it add it to the graph if I want. It'll just give us an instance of it, or I can delete it right there also. But I can move those by clicking on the variables. You see they get highlighted. I can add more variables here if I want. So if I wanted a different type of variable, say I wanted a float, uh, I can do my float. If I can type it right, my float. And I can add more than one in this this window right here so I don't have to keep clicking that I can add as many as I want here int my int um, I can add a string if I want I can do string uh, type in string and do my string and create all of those right there and I can assign the values if I want you can see that they're color coded we do 1 1.5 and I can type in hello though. And variables are just containers for these data types. So I have to give them an actual value. So I had to type in 1, 1 1.5 over hello for the string. Uh, some more complex ones, I can make a vector 3. And you can see when I make these that they're all color coded. And that's a theme that goes throughout diagram is when you see those colors, you're going to be able to know what type of variable the object wants or it is. If I drag off of it, it's context sensitive. Um, you can see uh, how this works out for this for the, the variables that you have um, like this vectors vectors are always going to be yellow strings are always going to be pink those are always going to be floats are green ints turquoise so and so forth um, these variables that we're going to be using uh, we have context ways that we can use them uh, with the with those plugs and sockets on the side of them. Um, I can right click and delete them, add new ones to graph that way. Uh, there are other ways I can add them to the graph here. If I right click, you'll see the little variables portion there. Under cube, there's all the variables I had also, so I don't have to add them from the side there. I can add them right from this context menu also, and they correspond to all of the variable types, and the variables that I made there. And we'll be using that more and more throughout this, uh, throughout the rest of the videos. But that's how we create simple variables. Uh, we can create more complex variables, which we'll be doing in other, other videos. But I want to show a little bit of the usage for these variables. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to add, uh, I'm going to add these together uh, and spit out this into a log. And the debug log is just going to put it down into the console there. But the first thing I'm going to do is show you how this works just to log it. So I'm going to 
make that my int, which is set to 1, I'm going to log that value of 1 down into the console there. Uh, and you'll see it well, when this happens. But it can't do anything yet. You'll see how they're not connected. To make anything work in this, you have to uh, connect these execution pins. So execution plugs goes into execution sockets. And you'll see that little OK there. That means it knows you can connect that. Uh, and that's how that happens. Start is an event that happens once when this object is made. So the execution starts to flow through it. Um, and then it goes and gets the data from the variable that's connected to it. And it's going to log that to the screen uh, there. So that value of 1 is what's going to show up down here uh, when, I, when I start this. Should at least. 1. It did. So on start, it said, what is the value of that variable? And debug log it to the console. Uh, there. So if we, you can see that I can disconnect these by right clicking them, right click, disconnect those if I want. And you can see also that little OK, that green OK that comes up, that lets you know that that variable can connect to that. If you don't see that, it's not going to allow you to connect. That's how we kind of stop from people putting bad things in bad places. Um, execution pins always work in that situation. Uh, but what we're going to do next is we're going to add these together. I'm not going to delete this because I want it. Yeah, I still want it to uh, print out the result of this. So I'm going to move this and I'm going to, I want to add some things together and then put it back and then assign that variable. So I'm just going to type in add or I could just do the plus symbol. Uh, if I just typed in plus, it's going to bring up add also. Add and int together. And I'm just going to add a value to this. And the value I want to add to it, I'm just going to put down into B there, 1. But that just does the, it does the math for you. It doesn't assign that variable back into uh, that, the my int so that it can hold the result. So to, to do that, I need to take the result of, of what we did uh, in this add here. And I need to put it into the socket of the variable. And as I do that, when I let go, you're going to see that it gets those little, it gets the execution sockets and plugs with it. That's because when I set something, if I go in the left side, I'm going to be setting it. And I need to, that's going to be something I need to actually pass logic through to do that. And now I've added those together, got the, assigned it back into my int. And now I'm going to debug log that. And the result I should get when I do this. Uh, it uh, should be 2. You should see that my int is going to turn into 2 uh, because I've added it, stored it, and now I'm going to debug log the, uh, the value of it. So when we hit play, you're going to see that it's 2 there. So we created variables here. And we actually used them. We got values from assigned values to them, got values from them in script. And then we set those variables back. And you could see how the plugs and sockets work with that. Um, so that's variables. And we'll be doing more later.